He's got a relatively small component in your budget here, um, and he's not he's actually not asking for another dollar except for maybe a new Corvette or something. What did you say? What did the mayor agree to? So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, but um, his the revenue side of his operation is an important component in the budget, and um, and over the past several years has been a discussion here at the board level about what's going on in the world and, um, you know, the, the amount of building activity and permit activity that we've had and the revenues have been very strong. But, um, you know, I think, I think Ed has a pretty good outlook on, on things, so it would be helpful to hear where, you know, where things are going. So, anyway, that's why, that's the main purpose here for, to, to really walk through what, what he's seeing from a, from a building activity. Anyway. So, I, I mean, if you start, we start with um, applications and building permits. We're starting a downturn. Um, the 2016 revenues and total construction estimated at the bottom, they're about $8 million high on construction and $140,000 high because of the country flip. So if you take that anomaly out, we're still doing good with revenues and um, construction costs, staying in the general average, but we're slipping. We're down to $9 million in the construction of the village. So we need to be prepared for revenues not to be, because these numbers are based on revenues, permits are based on value of construction. Permit numbers are going down, uh, cost of construction is going down, which means revenues will eventually be affected. We know that the 2018-2019 budget will have um, um, Marker Ridge on it, Marker Ridge that may occur in that fiscal year, but the next fiscal year, 19 and uh, 20. Nothing on the horizon. There's nothing on the horizon. You know, these things take two or three years to get approved, and there's nothing in the approval process. So you need, we need to be prepared for the revenues to level out, idle out, and be similar to what we um, saw in the past. Um, when you take a, a small brief history, I do, an, I, I do my revenue projections based on um, taking the average, taking the cost of the construction, um, taking the um, revenues and the amount of permits, removing any new housing or large developments to keep it balanced. And this year, after all those calculations, I came out the same revenue projection of uh, $251,000. So we're right on target to stay within that budget frame, but knowing that Marker Ridge is coming in and that should generate uh, almost two hundred thousand dollars in revenues if it's all taken in one. Where's Marker Ridge? Uh, the RV property. Oh, Denardo. Oh, Denardo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, just to give to give you perspective, um, we have a building permit budget of two hundred thirty thousand. Um, you know, this year well, we. Look in your book and you tell what it yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay, if you open yeah, up to, uh, let me talk about well, it. Up. It's under public safety, safety? and it's right there. It's, it's building, it's this one here. Okay, public safety. Right there. Right. So okay, the next page. That's the, whole the next page. Okay. So if we go to uh, Brenda's expense control form for building, you'll see that our revenues are coming. Um, the previous page. Yeah, the previous page. Yeah. Okay, that's the page. 
So yeah, so two so two hundred thirty thousand. So if you if you right. no, no, I think plus ten thousand for plumbing building permits. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, two thirty is being kept the same, but but if you look back at the history, so so this year we're at we've taken in so far two hundred three. So it appears that we'll be hitting that number. Yeah, no, no. Um, but the year before was 312. The year before that was 425. So you might be thinking, yeah, we should be increasing. Why are we not increasing this? We yes. keep under undercutting it. But but Ed's been coming. We didn't come last year, but the, I think the year before came and, and pointed out that you know that this is an anomaly. These numbers, while their their real revenue coming in, are not sustainable, and that's and that's starting to prove itself out here. So anyway, just to put it in perspective. Yeah, I wouldn't want you know. Two years, a year and a half, two years from now, we'll be sitting here and probably telling you we're not making revenue. Yeah, that? 180,000 of revenue, and yeah. we're at 230 on a budget. You it's, know what I mean? It, so it, it'll be a big hit when it comes. That's why we're right. I'm bringing it to your attention now. We don't want it to be. So the recommendation is to leave it at the flat level, the same as last year. The flat level as last year for the uh, 18, 19 budget, and we have to have a little. A, 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 Trigger compensation for the 19 and 20 budget. Right. Yeah, I don't think that works. Depending on the timing of, of Marker Ridge. Like yeah, Marker Ridge. If Marker Ridge gets built in this coming fiscal year, then you're going to far exceed your 230. Right. But then the following year, this you know, year from now, when we're sitting here doing the, the 19 20 budget, you know, probably not, not probably. So, just as a point of information, what were the, the developments in 2013 and 14 and 15? That then increased us from five and six million up to ten and eleven and twelve. The 2016 is the country club, right? The 2015 is volume and new houses, right? So you, I mean, you, you just got Stones Ridge. Stones Ridge. Uh huh. Yeah. A lot of development up there. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at nine, new eleven new houses. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So you know, you, you go down to 2014. There's only one new house. Um, and the revenues were down to 10 million. Um, in 2013, you can see a um, another, yeah, so fee changes. What else? Change. Yeah, I, we only go back to 2013 because the fee check structure was completely different. Um, we took on a more um, not ambitious, but an easier uh, way for the residents to understand the fee schedule. Fair, a fair or two. We went to. Um, Fee based, uh, seventeen dollars per thousand, and then we can charge by inspection because that's where people were taking advantage of our time. So the people that did it right, wanted to do it right, were rewarded by not having us go back, um, and it's worked very well. If you want to discuss our fee structure right now, we're on for Westchester County, Lower Westchester County, we're on the low side of average. I don't recommend an increase right now. I think the residents have been hit with enough taxes and enough. Uh, other stuff, other stuff. It's just, like, <laughs> it just it's, it's unbelievable how, you know, yeah. here we are fine tuning, getting our stuff together, giving them a little bit better service for a lot faster, getting the permits out than most communities in the area. And we still have this long delay with our planning boards and our ARBs. Um, Dot Survey is actually a little bit longer than us. Um, Hastings doesn't have as many um, boards to go through for additions and stuff like that. But everyone else, Tarrytown is similar to us, Sleepy Hollow is similar to us. So on a Rivertown basis, we're average. I think we're more thorough than the other communities. Um, there's no wiggle room. You'll see in some of the other communities, there's some wiggle room. We don't have to have it. So Ed, in terms of market range, do all the building permits get let at one time, or? It's, it's applicant driven. So because obviously to build, what is it, like 20? 20 21 plus. Yeah, 26 units or whatever it is. So it's going to be, most of those are two two uh, unit buildings. So that's like 12 or 13 structures, right? Yeah, yeah I, off the top of my head, I don't know. Well, there's there's, there's threes that. and fours. Yeah, is that yeah. possible to, yeah, three, there's a single three, I think, and then, a, and then the four is the affordable. I guess my point is, can he actually process all of those in one year? It, and and I, I don't mean to answer this way. It's, it's none of our business. No, I know. I'm just saying. And we don't want to. We don't want to be caught being no. part of that. Um, I'm not saying. Any, but in any conversation, because people, you know, it's, the expectations yeah. here are for us to represent the whole village, and not how Mr. Donardo does his business. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just in terms of 
experientially, you know, is, is it really going to be a drop off? Like the talk was, what was being said was after this year, there wouldn't be any market rich revenue. And I'm wondering if we can actually, you know, it's like, it's the Python. The, the yeah, the infrastructure, I think was a bigger test than he thought. He's completing it now. Road base should be going in when the plants open up. Health department approval on the testing of the existing water mains within a month or two. Um, sales office is opening. He just got his ARV approval on the sign for the sales office. So, yes. They're, they're gearing up. They're gearing up. I can't promise you all the revenue is coming in at once. I don't know what his plan is. Um, I mean, if it, if it, if it comes it's, in, it it's comes feasible in. that it could, is, is, yeah. is the question. So, it's if it does, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. No, no. The idea that it looks like a certain amount of this revenue is probably going to be coming in in the next year. Yeah. 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 Is there a season budget? Well, or it's, it's not coming in. It's not going to be coming in for the fiscal year 2017. Just sitting here wishing. 18, 19 is what you're sitting here wishing that money doesn't come in. That's amazing. <laughs> you never heard that before. <laughs> but yeah, and that's why. That's why. Yeah, but that's why kicking the can down the road. No, so, yeah, so. Right no, I understand, but I'm just saying it might not be such a. Uh, it's whatever it is. It is. Yeah, I, I, I don't regulate that. Yeah. yeah. But look, the, the end of the day, it's clear that you all understand it. So, that's the all we can do is understand what the issue is, and you're ready to react to it when you when you have to, you know, and and we're not playing games with this number by overextending ourselves now just so that next year we've got a huge problem and you know that type of thing so and we've never that's that's been the theme from from us and you know all of us and this and the board's been great like that um, about not overextending you know not playing games with that surplus number like we talked about last time or in this case you know one that we we know is going to be higher next year at least we're pretty confident it'll be higher you could play a lot of games with that if you wanted to but then you'd be sitting That's here wondering what to do next year, <laughs> you know? So, anyway. We also seem to keep running for re-election, too, so that's, you know, just bring ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the, other, the other point um, that is probably <laughs> worth covering is um, on the expense, first of all, on the expense side, there's not much to his budget. Well, that's it's, the second it's, page here, right? Yes. Right. It's basically personnel. And this is essentially on that. Yeah, so it's, one less, so it's, it's one, it's, yeah, it's not overall, yeah. Right. It's not overall. Um, but it's worth, it, it's, maybe it's worth just covering a little bit about the, the staff that you have okay. and the plan for handling what's coming and the plan for when what's coming is no longer here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did just build it. We did just hire an assistant building. That's correct. Um, brief staff duties. We have a part-time building inspector. He works 15 hours a week. He's a retired building instructor from Yonkers. We, he is here because of the country club and Donardo. Uh, if Donardo winds down or even gets slow enough, uh, that, that position will be eliminated. Um, he's done a great job in between keeping busy with sending out letters to everyone who has an open permit, which is helping us not be so backed up at closing times and at busy times. Um, file, send out emails, on, it's really great from 2013 on, everyone's on the system, so we just type an email into uh, into the email that they send, and they're giving a heads up that they have an open permit, give us a call, um, and that's why you'll see inspections and COs are pretty hot. Um, yeah, yeah. Last year, last year the COs were high because of the, the uh, end result of the um, oh, okay. the end result of the um, the reassessment, people closing out permits, um, mm -hmm. they have their predated letters. So you can see our, our average is probably around 700 to 800 uh, inspectors. We've, you know, 1,600 uh, in the 2016 year, and you know, 1,112 in this past 17 year. Remind and me what a predate letter is? A predate letter is when a house is built before there were um, records of building permits and COs. It's just a document that uh, assists the bank in understanding when it was built and that it doesn't have a CO. Without a predated letter, a bank usually will not give a loan out. Um, we have a policy that's been in place since 2003, which um, we go in, we do an inspection, we do a, um, a report on your existing, they provide us with a survey, a hand drawing of the house, 
um, the Greenberg card, and a few other documents. We take all those documents together and make sure that everything is there and supposed to be there because we won't want to write a document to an, undo, to an illegal part of the house. We do an inspection, and if everything's right, we give them a pre-date letter. If it's not right, we hold on to the pre-date letter, and we help them legalize the offending item. It's usually a basement bathroom, sometimes a first floor powder room behind the front entrance door. We have good records from 1956, and before that we had none, and after that a lot of stuff happened. <laughs> uh, the Tyler report we know is not worth using for a legal document, um, but it's a good tool to get an estimate of what should be in um, if there's, if you encounter a significant life safety issue, we address that immediately. It gets addressed. Yeah. In other words, it, you don't just get a pre-date letter if no, you know, the, the drawing is done meet, nicely. It has, if to meet the New York State, it has to meet the New York State uh, property maintenance code, which is a safety code. It's not a building code, but it has some building code issues in it. But it's the smoke detectors, handrails, safe steps, that illumination at the doors, little things, heat. You know, little things. Like, um, like electricity. Elect no, no, it doesn't have to have electricity. That's not a requirement of the state code. You have to have a Also, half the village is compliant. Yeah. 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 Um, no, sorry. So, pre date letter, you'll, and they're good for life. We don't update them. Other communities have what's called a continuing CO. I don't think we're ready for that yet. We have a good handle on our housing stock where other communities have let it go where there's a lot of multifamilies where there shouldn't be. Um, we have a few. Um, we didn't take any, last year, we didn't take any undocumented dwelling units out the year before we took out a couple um, through the pre-date process. What does take out mean? Uh, can demo. Oh. <laughs> and, right. Yeah, we, we've never had, a, we, we've always had cooperative residents in Irvington that have done the right thing and hired somebody right away, so we've never had to really push the subject. I see the violations are hidden in your records in 2007. Yeah. Well, I guess honestly, it's not true. It's 2002, 42. Never mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why is that? There's um. Yeah, violations are a funny thing. Receiving. Um, <laughs> um the, the number varies every year dramatically. There's no real primary reason. Primary reason. Last year we had a lot of people upset <laughs> with neighbors. Uh, they were almost half of them were neighbor complaints. Really? Yeah. Wow. Neighbors read it. We save on gas money. It's good for the environment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and actually, um, uh, part of having a an assistant, a part time assistant, um, allows for some of the follow up on the, the other, violations. The other half of the CD, uh, our assistant has found them. Um, we have a system of uh, doing a whole village every week. We'll do a certain section each time of the week, each day of the week. We have a different section on the three days he works. So he's covering the whole village and a drive by. So we rack, we rotate the hours of the day. Uh, we, we rotate rotate the days he works. So we've got a good feel for the neighborhood work going on. Um, that number might be underestimated because if we find somebody just drops driving down Jeffrey Park with two red trucks and two backhoes on them and you know, unloading rocks, we'll just, just tell them you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> um, and if they comply, you won't see that violation there. Oh, awesome. Um, this compliance over conviction, that's our motto. Yeah, yeah we're not interested uh, we're not in, interested in prosecuting from it. We're not interested in front of the judge, but we're more than capable of doing it. And that's uh, Matt Spencer's hiring helped with? The Matt Spencer's hiring helped with the two um, chronic ones we're working on. Just knowing that he's there have really um, given us, it's, it's a great tool. It's a leverage, yeah. It's, right. yeah. Right, right, the idea is not to necessarily have to bring them into court. No, but now that, that they know we have him. We want compliance. Um, yeah. I'm getting compliance without without even doing the process. It's saving you the village money, saving the applicants money. And it, and it gets where we want to go. Yeah, we're not looking to, like I said, bring it on to court to get compliance. So chronic, you mean places that continually have violations and that refuse to correct their violations <laughs> and or um, you probably know about them, but we won't, we yeah, won't go into we that. Can't now. Go into <laughs> <here>. <laughs> but but you know about them. I don't understand what we're talking about. I, and I can tell you that uh, being, you know, standing in a, in a in a deli with him and seeing having him see a truck with sheetrock on it going down Main Street, <laughs> he'll get out into the truck and follow it. Yep. 
So that's a that's a it, they stop at nothing to make sure they know exactly what's going on. You know, does it mean they pick up every single violation in existence? Of course not. But but no, it's even more. <laughs> They're, they're it's not the it, won't be, it wouldn't be the first time we just got up and walked out. Um, <laughs> it's really, it's really, it's really, yeah. <laughs> I've been in, I've been in uh, staff meetings on Mondays and watched a lot of trucks go down and go <laughs> look for it later. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's a small community, so we don't want to be right. overbearing, but at the same, at the same time, we come off overbearing. You want to stop something before it happens right. that's a negative for the right. village. Well, it looks like the FOIL request, too. If, uh, that's all. That's all. Do to our computer program. Well, yeah, you, you don't. Yeah. Well, oh, sure. we don't have to talk to anybody anymore. They set up the desk. They look up the, what they want. You know, can our system be better? Yes. Is it fabulous? Yes. Um, we don't have any uh, interruptions. Great. I don't think people want to know what we're. I don't think they want us to know what they're looking at. And I think having it on the computer at the desk is a is a positive move. And that's Good. interesting. Sure, because they, they find a violation and they have to decide what they're going to do about it. Yeah. But if you know this. In the past, it used to stop the clerk and myself. We have to yeah. find the file, mm -hmm. go over the ball, go to the storage room, look for it, pull it out, inevitably know everything that's going on. Now, the realtors come in before they list the houses, the local realtors, so the out-of-town as well. And um, that's working about Every year, we, we, we that's why we're doing extra more revenues. Uh, we in our budget. We always find these little things. You know, 15 years ago, it took 30 minutes to issue an electrical phone card, and that takes three, and no balance. So, you know, those were the big ones. Now they're, they're not so big anymore. It's it's a lot of the reason, and we talked about this in a previous previous budget discussion. It's a lot of the reason why we were able to convert um, office administrative staff into office field professionals, you know, it's why we have another inspector, but we haven't increased bodies, you know, we've just converted the bodies. And that's the new inspector, that we, I think we've that's more lost quality. track of that, we've got a quality inspector, um, fully trained already, before we, um, we got appointed our um, uh, probationary, <laughs> all of these, um, but she can also do clerk work, so it's not, it's not a, an inspector of myself that must go out to do the work, I'm just asking for work. She can do the plan reviews for rolling average and not so average permits. She can go out to the field do inspections of all residential homes, commercial and working on. We don't have a lot of commercial. So it's actually a benefit for everywhere, everything. Our part time guy can come and go as we need. If we get too slow, we'll just don't stay home. He's happy to. Um, so, we, so the topic that I want to bring up, which is the perennial topic, so going all electronic. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the last time we've talked, we've talked about this periodically over the course of the years as I grow up in the new world and retire soon. Six years, three months. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> not that I'm counting. So the point is that, uh, I'll do that. we always come, you know, a lot of the hurdle about being able to accept electronic documents mm -hmm. is over with, but the issue seems to be still a timing of processing documents. Can we talk about that a bit to see? Yeah. You have this, the schedule for the, the planning board is pretty well set because it was the first model. Um, and I think what we have for the planning board is a model for the rest of the village and probably the rest of the county. A lot of people admire our system, but it's labor intensive. What we do is we receive the applications. We have two weeks for the planning board to get them uh, reviewed, commented before the meeting. So it takes about a week to upload them onto the computer. Once they're on the computer, um, residents, board members can review them. The planning board, if they chose, could eliminate a lot of their printed documents. Um, being, that being said, it's very hard to get some of the old school people to work electronically. Your ARV, the deadline is on a Monday, and it's one week to a meeting. We don't have the time to get it in there. Only to make it worse, the planning board and the ARB deadline once a month are the same week. So it's impossible to get done. Um, without well, you, a, have, you have two ARB meetings a yeah. month, which makes it right. makes the timing right. so inflexible. So the, the amount of work and labor and the review process that the planning board requires takes up all of my time for almost a week and plus a couple of days, plus pre-meetings, so the only way to get the ARV uploaded was to, was to give us two weeks is to change the schedule. I've got a few ideas I don't think it's good for this round table to discuss, 
but it would, it would involve a major change in how we do business. Um, you mean at the ARB or just? I think in general. I, I think you know, getting the ARB to work with the planning board or um, it's it's very complicated. I, it's not. I don't think it's for this forum right now. There's lots of ideas and different things to do, but you'd have to put it on a two-week schedule. You'd have to put it where it would alternate not one week with the planning board, but two weeks with the planning board. So the planning board meeting would be the planning board, that, uh, the ARB deadline right. for the second meeting. The ARB, I think, I don't know. You know, I, 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 I have different different ideas, but one of them, it's right for the public. Suffice, suffice it to say that this is a, a bit of a holy grail for him. He, we would love it if the residents didn't have to submit 18, 18 paper copies. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, uh, I think the people, that, the folks that are architects on the boards, I think they're for that whole electronic. So my second part of this is not to go too deep because I'm more than willing to sit down with you and, and hear it, you know. In the slow season. Um, but uh, yeah, right. <laughs> during the next snowstorm, which yeah. might be tonight. Uh, yeah. um, but the other thing is, uh, you know, one of the things I see down here is that it would be good. It, one of the enabling things would be if there was actually a way to access the digital files to the machine. You know, the problem is there's no laptop down here typically unless well, some yeah, well, for the meetings. Yeah, it's not a problem. I, I, yeah, we can, we can. That my plan is to have a laptop down here. Or can just have a direct network connection. connection. Yeah. That, just, well, you still need a don't, don't get hung up on the technical part. No, no, we I'm can just handle that, that part of that. This is all set up. A, yeah, I know, yeah. I understand. Yeah. And yeah. I know people do come in and do presentations. But it's not going to get uploaded for the air. Right. There's, there's physically no time. Additional staff. That's, that's, that's where the effort changes. has to be made is to, and is to look at. And which I'm not prepared yeah. to spend your money on. <laughs> well, but that's that's where we have to talk through about the benefits and, yeah. and costs to the residents as well. Right. Because there's, you know, but anyways, the point is that uh, as long as it's not an impediment, and I didn't think there was to no. getting something down. No, it's, it's time and labor. No, it's our, yeah, we have to look at our processes, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. So. And Ed's obviously thought about it, so. We'll, yeah, I mean, I've got a few different ideas, and they, they all involve major changes of how we do business on the ARB and planning board, yeah. and zoning board for that matter. I don't know. It's, but it's worth working for. No, yeah. no questions. I'm hoping that we, we can get some motion on it. I, I, I would support what, what you're saying, Mark, you know, in terms of hearing. No, and, yeah, and, and I know and, you are too. Well, the planning board is yeah. the model. Yeah. So, what we know with the planning board is, is our goal for all boards. So, and, you know, if, if it wasn't for some members, we would get rid of the 18 copies. That would be down to 10 easy. Um, the library will have a lot. Uh, and that's real money, by the way. It's not. This, yes, it's, that's right. You know, it's hundreds of dollars yeah. for, the, for the applicants. Yeah. Right. I know there has to be at least one, probably, paper at every meeting, just in terms of, yeah, but, uh, you know, like. But it's really easy to put a shelf over there on the corner. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I made them there. Put one copy there, yeah. Yeah, okay, because I know, for instance, with. Uh, but that's the answer. So ARB, it's, it's ready to fill it out. have to be put on the document. Well, well that's a different issue. They shouldn't be documented. They shouldn't be open at the meetings. There's no one present from the building department. We'll get to that's another issue. <laughs> yeah, I know this isn't the right. forum. I'm just yeah. saying I, I definitely support Mark's you know yeah. line of questioning and desire to make it work, and I know you do. Yeah. So I'd love to just yeah, we'll set we'll set it a, we'll set it we'll, we'll set it as a formal right. goal. And I think Mark yeah, is that's good because you know we have yeah. talked about it as long as I've been on the board. Yeah. yeah. So but the planning board's working. The planning board model is working very well. Yeah. Um, well, I, I don't if we can just enhance it, I think it'd be fine. It's like taking the tree. It's like taking the tree permits and putting them into our system to track better. It's a different way of tracking than you're doing. It. Are you ready for that? Because we would enjoy we would enjoy that because then we wouldn't have to go shopping and looking for a tree permit. We could just punch it in the car and have it. I don't know why it's not being done, but it's no. It's, and it's it's and I'm not saying it's it's not being done because nobody wants it. It's another thing to do. It's another thing to do. Right. And I just want to point out that you know I'm not trying to bust anyone's trust because I know there's been a lot of movement forward over the last few years in terms of digitization and mm -hmm. blah, 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 getting the databases together and the forums. And, mm -hmm. So that's all good stuff. Now it's mm -hmm. like... Take it to the next step. Yeah. We still, we, we yeah. still have we got work it. to do. Um, yeah, yeah there, we have, um, we were hoping in February to initiate a new FIR and coverage check, checklist that, and it's done, it works, um, where a resident can figure out their coverage requirements without coming and bothering 
to hire an architect or an engineer. Like a printed spreadsheet that could be that filled in. Tabulates it, and it's ready to go. Um, put it into our system, it's taking the time. It's having our computer guy take it into a, a way that we can archive it in a manner to export data differently than just the way it goes in has been a little bit of a challenge. Complexity we'll get it. or time? No, we'll get it. I mean, <laughs> I, I think I've showed, did I show you those poems? No, you did not, but I, I think, well, Larry, did you use them? You used the coverage one. You showed me how it worked. Yeah, uh, you didn't try. That's <laughs> good because, because there's so much. Yeah. So and I think even finish. improvements like that, they, you know, they're so, they're so minor when you say you fix one page in an application, but it's, I think it helps all the residents and the applicants get the answer. But, you know, if the board says to say your coverage is wrong because you didn't do it right, and we can avoid that, that might save an applicant for one month. And it saves you time on the phone. Yeah, and we're not, you yeah. know, and it's a good open government. Are there some communities that have figured out that form? There's a few communities that have that form online, and yeah. a few communities that have it auto tabbing, mm -hmm. uh, but they don't have it tied into a system. Uh, and that's good enough. We have a, a one off system that we share, we don't share, we, we use the same system as Hastings and Dobbs Ferry. Other communities, Rockland and New Jersey, use it, New Rochelle uses it, and they all use it. Well, Irvington, Dobbs Ferry, and Hastings are using it very similarly. Um, New Rochelle, for instance, will take payments uh, online for their electrical and plumbing permits. We'll get that. Um, one more thing um, to do. Um, it, it doesn't take a lot. It just, I think it's just sitting down front. Um, so we have these things to work on. Um, it, it's not like we're sitting still just doing our job and getting through the day. We have lots of open-ended projects that we want to finish in, in, in the spare time we do it. When 2008 came and got slow, mm -hmm. we went to scanning. We've scanned all our building permits yeah, all the way that. back to history. Yeah. I don't think any many communities have that and available on the computer to people. There's some reconciliation that has to be done because we got busy in 2010 and it's grown expeditiously. Mm -hmm. But that reconciliation gets done on rainy days, which has rain. Well, I, I applaud this effort. I, I definitely do. And um, I, I think Mark is probably the best the most No, yeah, Mark person. and I have spent yeah. some time once, on it. Once um, he's in touch, then he can be in touch with the rest of us, and we can hear the updates, and, mm -hmm. or Larry, but or whoever. It it. Fresh but it's, uh, I think it's something that no the, for no the citizens will appreciate the greater digitization of this whole process. Um, no, it's light years ahead of yeah. where it was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No more index cards. Thank you. Anything else? Good. I was just starting to look at this picture. You're too big for a quarter of that. That's good. I think it's two Corvettes now. <laughs> so the line for the two the two regular employees, yes. you, and then the part-time person mm -hmm. is the like, is the other one. Right. Yes. Okay. So it's, uh, it's two, actually two, two and a half. employees. Right. Yeah, we got Sarah. Um, is a portion sixty-five percent of her time um, budgeted to us. We have uh, Manny fifteen hours a week budgeted to us, and then we have one full-time employee. So we really only have one full-time employee myself. So two full time employees. Right. And then two part time. Manny. Right. Okay. Anything else? So what I did here is I uh, did the building department as its own uh, proper, you know, expense and revenue department. And then the second one is our uh, planning board. And there's no changes there. So, uh, we had no cuts combined before. Do the planning board, uh, do they make use of any of their training budget? They, I don't think they have a separate um, training budget. We have kind of a, we have like a, a lump, yeah, lumped in one altogether. So there, there are some that take advantage of it. Um, but I, I don't have the exact number. You don't have a specific line within the planning department. Right. Okay. So, but there are sometimes some of the things are free. I know, like yeah. it's this time investment, like the um, the pay stuff. Yeah. Right. But, uh, sometimes there's storm water. There's other kinds of programs yeah. that could be interesting. But we is money encourage available? we encourage attendance. There, there's there's sent there's there's information for them. Anything that comes in that's planning, really planning for the forward to them. Yep. You haven't turned anyone down for budget reasons, right? No, no, no. There's a separate budget, like I said, for yeah, for, for, for But it had to have 
No, no, no. I mean, don't they need that in order to keep some sort of municipal education? They need to continue the education for board members or something? Yes, technically. Technically, yeah, four hours. Thank you very much. Okay. Nice. Thanks, Ed. Thank See you in the year. <laughs> Sooner. <laughs> you better hold on. <laughs> Do you want me to find you and sit down with you one day in the next few weeks? Um, I don't know what your slow period is. We're in our slow, actually in our slow period, which is slow right now, where um, the spring market's coming. Uh, really sick start of the world. So um, all the people that are coming Nice to see everyone. Well, I think um, if you take a look at the, uh, the, the, the cover sheet you, and you take out the first three things, which are the um, the salaries uh, and the contra and the CSEA stuff, um, we're really only talking about um, asking for a net increase of twenty thousand two hundred dollars, which I can tell you in all my years here is probably <laughs> the lowest amount we've ever come in looking for or asking for. Um, you know, we're comfortable that uh, we have the ability with the increases that are there. In fact, just on the increases, the uh, the three that we should discuss, I think, which are the ones that stick out the most, the one that start at the bottom, the Halsey Pond treatment is one that um, I was, Larry just put in recently because of the work we're doing with the reservoir at Halsey Pond and the study and things we needed to do. So that was a last minute. Um, addition to the budget. Our number actually was at 13,000 before that. And then the two big ones are the uh, camp personnel, uh, which is the 7310459 line and the 7310486 line. Now both of those total $28,000, but they're offset with fees um, and an increase in revenue. On the day camp side, um, our day camp director, Maureen DePauly, uh, made a presentation to the uh, to our pack and really was looking to try to um, add some additional trips um, in addition to you know making sure she can maintain the high level staff that we have um, and most importantly um, at residents requests we're changing our extended hours program to go until four o'clock in the afternoon now, when you consider years ago, camp used to end at 1 o'clock, and then camp used to end at 1.30, then it ended at 1.30 with a chance to stay till 3 for extended hours, and parents have really just dictated they need us, especially working parents. So we're going to 4 o'clock this year, and the good thing about that is in the past, the school wouldn't want us there that long, um, but they're willing to let us stay. We have a great relationship, as I've told you many times, with the staffs. Um, at the Dallas Lane School, at all the schools, so there, there's, and they're happy to have us stay there, and um, I think it's meeting a real need for the community. So, um, you know, we analyzed what it would cost us, we looked at our fees, um, and we, we increased the fee for day camp um, for residents, non-residents, and other, and, um, you know, we, we think it's an important change to the day camp. Um, you know, I mentioned something right there that I'd like to, to stress too. I think the one thing that we've had to do often 
is we have to have the ability to adapt and change because the community tells us what they want us to do. Um, you know, with the uh, opening of the JCC and with some challenges from other programs being run in other departments, you know, we don't look at if, uh, I'm just going to pick a program, if, if Music with Mark, which has actually been with us for 30 years for some reason, um, stopped getting kids in it and no one signed up for it, it doesn't mean that Music with Mark was a failure. It means that people who want that type of program may be able to get it for less money through another spot. So we look to find out, well, what, what do we need because parents, you know, are telling us. And believe it or not, one of the places that has been a tremendous resource to help us decide where to go with our toddler programs has been the amazing change in the Nature Center and the Irvington Woods Committee. Because many of the things we've done up there with the new group and the new energy is we've brought in a lot of families. In fact, Rick, I know Rick, you worked close with Ann Jaffe doing the cider press. And all we kept saying to each other as we were doing it is, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Because there were so many new families with kids up there. And it was, for a lot of them, it was their first introduction to us. So, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to find ways. Day camp for the first time ever last Saturday had an open house at the Dow's Lane School because we wanted parents who are going to be putting their kids into the camp for the first time or parents who may be, you know, geez, a village camp as good as this private camp. So we brought in our key staff and they sat down there and parents were able to come in, see where their kids would be, look at the classrooms, meet Maureen, meet Nicole, and it worked really well because we, we found that Teenscape, which we'll talk about next, which went from being on its deathbed to bursting at the seams again, changed when we started offering the winter off-season Teenscape programs. Because those kids, 7th and 8th graders, got to know each other. I know uh, Brian uh, Ronins. He says the best camp he's ever been in. We yeah. paid a lot more for a lot of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, kids. What do they know? It's pretty cool when you... I was going to say, it's pretty cool when the mayor says that about it. Did I the line right, John? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> you got it. Um, but we don't stop. Everything's a continuation. Everything's a learning process. And a lot of times you have to adapt. And uh, we found that those kids, if we could keep them together off-season, they'd look more forward to coming to camp. Just as an example, this time last year in Teenscape, when we were just rebuilding it, we collective into two sessions, I think had 15 kids. Right now, session one has 25 kids already in it, and session two has 21 kids in it. So 30 was really what we would, would hope for, but we think we could hit 40 in both. And the budget is calling, is, is prepared for 40 kids. All right, so the budget is prepared for 40, and the revenue increase would, would make up for that. That is correct. If you ended up being less, then there'd be less That's revenue. Right. So if we end up with 30 kids, and we don't bring in the 10,000 in revenue, we'll have 10,000 less in expenses. So we would much rather be planning on, you know, being at our capacity than having to come back and say, hey, we need to have more kids. Can we increase the budget? Can you transfer? We think there's a good chance we'll hit our capacity. Day camp has been consistent. We've been between 250 and 300 kids the past five years, which is a huge number for a community camp without a swimming pool. Um, so, so those two numbers, you know, that don't be scared by those because those are offset. And then and the other things, if you look at them, it, it, it's really, you know, I'll answer any questions you have on it, but just running down to CAB supplies. The only bad thing about the grant is the grant can't pay for food for the meetings. And and we get, we get at our CAB meetings 40 plus people. And the kids who Most come. Most of them are kids who, and who, who, who want to eat. Who hit that yeah. table. Yes, <laughs> yes. And un un unfortunately, yeah, I, I have I, been I, I over right, I've been overruled. <laughs> and I no longer can bring in the breakfast we did. So we've switched to yogurt and fruits. And it's not exciting. But, but, but uh, Tanya and <laughs> Allison. <laughs> One month, I just had to bring in a tray of donuts just to make myself feel better. <laughs> Um, yeah, so so we so that's the increase there. Uh, park supplies are just the nature of the beast. The beautification committee I've asked for an additional thousand dollars. 
you know, that group works very hard. You know how often they're out there between the spring planting, the summer planting, the fall planting, um, and they're always trying to squeeze in an extra couple of flats. I really think they're deserving of it. It's a volunteer-based group, and it's it's not a, a number that will, you know, it's not shaking the, the boots. Glad to see we're buying more geese. Well, we're buying more geese, yes. Um, the perennial thorn in Joe's side. You know, the, 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 the $2,000 is, is to keep trying to find new and better ways. Uh, nothing's we, worked, so. Nothing's worked. Everything has worked. Nothing has sustained. Right. You know, they get smarter than the rest of us. The good news is, with the exception of east to figure out how to get there's, there's <laughs> it's a day camp. <laughs> Wait, what? Well, it's in the day camp. You're the geese. That, that'll work. Three of them screaming kids. We were up at <laughs> we were up at Halsey Pond in the spring uh, one day because we had had a call that there were eggs, and it was actually in March, and there shouldn't have been eggs. So the company we use actually came out and did us a favor, and they went out. There's a little island right off of the castle, mm -hmm. and you could see the eggs. And we were like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? And they just happened to be eggs that never, you know, hatched. never hatched. Mm -hmm. But there were literally a 1,000 geese at the pond that day. Oh and we had never seen wow. it as bad as it was. Yeah. And for the first time ever, if you're a Facebook follower, you may have seen this. We've had geese at Memorial Park. Really? Oh, Never really? got him at Memorial Park. Yeah, I remember uh, Mike Toulon, B BJ, posted a picture of it, and I wanted to pull it off the <laughs> screen <laughs> and get rid of it. But but the, obviously they are still a menace to us. So we're looking to we may have to spend a little bit more money to keep trying to get rid of them. Is the there any community anywhere that we know of that's had Great sustained success? success? Not, not using um, means that we would want to follow. We are still very, very careful to not use any products or materials that be, could, could be considered to be hazardous, dangerous, or you know you have to control how you do it. Um, the, the good news is, is that there are a couple of products that we wanted to try and had never been able to because New York State wouldn't uh, approve them. They are now approved, so we're actually going to be trying a couple different products. One of the things we're looking to do is to um, put a new fertigation system in at Scenic Hudson Park. Um, so now it's fertigation? fertigation. Fertigation. Right. What happens is you actually put your um, fertilizers oh, okay. um, into uh, the system, and when your sprinklers go on, it comes out through the sprinklers, so you don't have to apply it. And um, when we built Scenic Hudson Park, we put one in, but it never worked. So we're, we're trying to do that. And now that we've increased the uh, irrigation to all of Scenic Hudson Park, um, it would be a good thing to be able to do. And we could also do it at Memorial Park because um, we're prepared to, to, to have the fertigation system go so there. So there's some product you can put in it that will? Yes. Well, there's, well, there's, there's definitely some to try, yes, that are now approved. Like the smell of barbecue or something? <laughs> <laughs> Great, <laughs> great, great, great flavor is what makes them nervous. Yeah. Yes, you never heard the story about the five cases of great Kool-Aid we bought? No. <laughs> I remember that it's, one. It's true. Belmont, <laughs> Belmont, Joe was drinking the Kool -Aid. <laughs> Belmont Racetrack, there was an article that as they prepared for the big day that they tried um, a pro something that's in the grape flavor. There's a certain chemical that geese did not like, and they treated their entire infield and had success. So we didn't know where to get the product at the time, but we, so we bought great Kool-Aid, and we put it all through <laughs> Mathis Park. And it rained. And it rained. <laughs> <laughs> and we had purple grass for about a week and a half. <laughs> how did the geese, how geese, how the geese, geese like it? They love it. They love it. I think they all developed diabetes. <laughs> So, um, so anyway, this this yes. uh, irrigation fertilizer thing would be some kind of product that the geese will not like. Correct. Maybe we'll try. Correct. Uh, the problem with most of the products is um, once you apply them, if it rains, they go away. So the cost, like there are products out there right now that we could use, and it would cost us between 
probably about $2,000 an application. So if we put it down tomorrow and the weather looked good and all of a sudden the weather changed, it'd be a waste. So, so we've, we've been very selective to what we've done. We've tried so, you know, how many things we've tried. And we'll keep trying. And we'll keep trying. So, you know. The one thing we are doing now, um, and, and this was a request from the Chief, and I, Chief Cerrone, and I, we thought it was a very good one, in lieu of the sensitivity of, of guns and bangs and noises, um, my staff have all been instructed prior to shooting the guns in the park, the whistlers, they call headquarters to let the desk know. Yeah. I, it's Ronnie Hardware, I'm in scenic, I'll be, I'll be shooting the launchers. And with, it's actually something that's, it's a good thing. Because yeah, like as soon as they get that call now, they know it's, it's the rec, it's awesome. the staff, right. you know. And everybody knows that people are a little touchy and sensitive and you can understand it. And we don't want to be the reason to make anybody um, be upset by what we're doing there. So, um, so you know, on, before we go into the other general stuff, these are the things I'm asking you to approve. If you need any more detail on any of those, the, the special event increases is, is the um, uh, the turkey trot um, is actually is very expensive because of uh, the need to close Broadway down and bring in so many staff and we've been getting close to 300 people the last few years at the race so it's um, you know it's partially funded by um, uh, the Girl Scouts um, and you know we don't want to raise the fee too high because it's really a community event. And you know, for those of you who haven't seen it, you get dads pushing their kids and moms pushing their kids in their strollers, who's carrying one on their back. You know, you'll see you know uh, entire Girl Scout troops and Boy Scout troops yeah, together doing it. So it's really a, a fun community event. But you know, close, you know, running on Broadway is is a very scary thing and. Unfortunately, the chief's on our side for that, and, and he makes sure that we're safe out there. So, but it's but again, it's it, 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 it's an expensive event for a, for a, an hour event. It's about seven grand. So, is there a desire to find an additional sponsor, or you? Oh, we're always you looking. No, we're always looking. Would be happy sure. if there uh, were such we, a. We don't say yeah, that. Okay. Um, as I've joked with Larry many times since 2010, I feel like I work for the United Way <laughs> because uh, I'm always out looking for donations. So, and the Girl Scouts wouldn't be. I think they do. If there was another. No, because we what we do is we give them. They'll we put their name on the shirts. They sell their. They get tables. They get to the set up. It's visible for them. The Girl Scouts have been extremely generous and easy to work with over the years. So they do a big sale that day. Yeah, a bunch yep. of things that they yeah. do. Yeah. I saw up in there. <laughs> the, the difficulty with fundraising for regular um, rec activities, including our special events, is we have to do so much with our work with the face committee. So you know, you can only hit that rock so many times. And how many times can I ask Jordanes to? To be a sponsor, you know. So, you, so we try to to find different groups and, and we try to get people to want to have ownership of events, if you will. So, um, you know, the Girl Scouts being, you know, with the uh, with the Turkey Trot is a good thing. Face does the uh, hayride. Um, you know, the fire department does the parade. So we, we, we do we do have a lot of people that are invested in our events. And, and sure, we we there's always another line on a shirt to put someone else if they step forward or another sign to be made if you will so, so somebody if some potential funder wanted to work specifically with the turkey trot they would just say hey i'd like to help sponsor the turkey well trot. as long as they understand that what the what the yeah. race is what right. what, the, yeah. what the intent that, is yeah, that it's course. you know we're not you can't come in and sell products yeah. or anything like that you know, you have to fit into yeah, to what we're trying to do, but we're, we would we would not turn anyone away. So, so any any questions on any other of, of, of the other increases? Uh, the Halsey Pond treatment we've already covered. Well, we didn't. One thing I wanted to say about that is, um, you know, that we put that budget line in in there um, almost as a placeholder at this point. Um, we, we did do a water quality analysis report, which I'm sure you, you all read and memorized. <laughs> um, I don't know anybody that can memorize that. <laughs> <laughs> That's for it. Both. Yeah. 
it's, it's covered all so placeholder for the reservoirs. We do, yeah. Yeah, in fact that's something that changed since the water department was right, here. We did add a similar number over okay. over to okay. the yeah. so um, you know that report I, I don't want to go into the great detail now because we could certainly talk about it or even look at it offline, but um, the report recommended a combination of, of aeration, which we already have up at Palsy, and uh, a biological treatment, not a chemical treatment, but a biological process several times over the course of the spring and summer uh, to, uh, to treat the pond uh, in a way to keep it, what we hope is to keep it healthy and to avoid uh, as long as possible the use of chemicals or any other type of treatment. So um, we did have to use chemicals up there once. Um, it was a, an important and necessary uh, almost one time only thing that we did that really got the pond back, you know, the duckweed gone and got the pond back into some, some health. Um, hopefully this will continue to maintain it. But it's open for discussion and not tonight necessarily, but um, so if you have an opportunity to review the report, look at the recommendations, if you have questions about it, we can get answers from the consultant that we used. Um, we, we met as a staff, Joe and Jim and I met and we're not experts in all of this. Jim probably knows more than both of us combined. But um, you know, we did have some questions for the company. They answered the questions. We feel comfortable that, that at least trying to do this biological approach um, makes sense uh, to try to keep the pond in balance and the reservoir as well. So. Could you send that around again? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. It's just top of my email box. Right? Must have been tortured again? Yeah. <laughs> It was torturous reading that thing. It's a long read. Yeah, now take a look. And there's, a, there's an executive and a list of, there's an executive summary and a list of records. That's what you want to go right to. Yeah. So to speak. Yeah. You can go right to that. If it's getting late at night, you know. Don't want to read the tables? <laughs> so, yeah, if you can read the tables, I got to tell you, it's tough. It's not, it's not a big item, but it's something that, you know, we know, we know about. We'd be irresponsible if we didn't at least acknowledge. Is, it, is that sort of the ballpark of what that kind of treatment? Yeah. It's multiple biologic? Yeah, it's three to four treatments over the course of the summer for each water body. So seven here or seven there. It's about what they recommend. And, the, I'm sorry. and, and some follow-up and follow-up testing and analysis to yeah, to, to ensure the effectiveness, right? So. And our, our, air, our aeration system is sufficient. We believe the one in Halsey is. In fact, it's probably oversized. Um, the reservoir does not have one, and that's something that will be up for future discussion. We're not suggesting that we dive into that project right now. Actually, it would be nice if, if the no. biologic approach works and the yeah, aeration. The pond is a much uh, shallower yeah. body of water, so that's the yeah. bigger size. It's about eight foot average, they determine. A lot of muck in the bottom. Yeah, we need a, lot need a much bigger aeration system so for the reservoir. That aeration system, just remind me, is that free floating? Uh, or is it tethered? It, it's it's tethered, yeah. but solar. Solar, and we did extensive repairs on it two, three years ago. Um, there was some, the company will come up usually once every two years and inspect it and make recommendations. And up until the last time, we were okay, but there was a lot that needed to be replaced. Um, actually, believe it or not, the panels had rocks thrown through them. So. And they broke the glass. Oh. The solar panels were broken, so we had to replace a whole arm. But since that, probably geese. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. that's not what they would do. The geese would do. Since the the, the, the upgrade <laughs> and the, and the, the repairs, <laughs> the ponds look better than it has. I mean, look, it's not it's not clear blue water, you know. No, no, but but, you know, but, but it's, it's healthier than the oxygen in to start uh, helping the. The, uh, the muck on the bottom decompose as well. I mean, mm -hmm. it's the whole yeah. process of getting air, their aeration back into the water. Right. So, anyway, well, I'll send around that report so you can read it again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, just, just quickly covering a couple of areas. I, I, I mentioned it before. There, there's, there's still tremendous, tremendous excitement with the Irvington Woods and the O'Hara Nature Center. Um, the new members have really added a, a great deal of life. They've already scheduled a bunch of uh, upcoming programs. Uh, April 14th will be a trails cleanup day, um, and we'll add a few other things to it. The first Sunday in June, 
will be the wine and cheese open house like we had last year. Um, we've also scheduled. What was that date, sir? Uh, it's the first Saturday in June, okay. first Sunday in June. I okay. apologize. And then uh, they're working on things like uh, movie night, campfire night, family fun nights. So, yeah, we did s'mores at the uh, fall event, which is where a lot of those new people came. We also have re are working again with the Greenberg Nature Center. Um, they've approached us. Um, on two different occasions. I've had meetings with their staff on twice. I met with their executive director last week. She's very anxious to try to partner with us and we'll probably be announcing some new programs very shortly. I want the Woods Committee to be the first ones to hear about that. But once that happens, um, we're thrilled to have Ann Jaffe Holmes back with us. Uh, Ann, came, I, I, Ann came in and I basically said, Look, we can go in a couple ways here. I said, number one, you can just come back to the committee. I said, number two, I got some ideas for you as far as programs go. And number three, anything else you want. And she said, I'd love to become part of the committee again. And uh, you know, one of the things that we're really looking to do is we want to make sure this year that there are set times where if residents want to go to the Nature Center, they're not dependent on finding someone on if there's an activity or a program that will have some hours. So a person like Ann is in the hallway and someone comes in and they're new and we give them a map and they say, hey, how do I get the hermit's grave? And they can say, hey, come on, I'll take a walk with you. We're not saying all day, but we want people to know there'll be times they can just go up there and, and, and have a chance to learn more about the place. You know, it's, there's still a lot of people who don't know much about it, but with this new group of young moms who really, I mean, you know, we're um, going to be doing a program I'm very excited about where uh, young children, um, especially children who may be struggling with reading, will come in and uh, with a therapy dog, they will actually read to the therapy dog. It'll be set up like a program. So it's just where you go. Yeah, it's, um, most of you know who George Berger is. Uh, George, Jane, Jane's uh, a partner. Uh, George is very involved with a, um, an animal shelter in Rockland County, and they developed this. It's actually in many of the Rockland schools where it's part of the curriculum where they do this. And Peggy O'Hara, who you all know, has a therapy dog. So the two of them are going to come in and with other people and it'll be set up like a program. You'll pay a fee, you'll come in. We developed a library um, on wheels where kids can come in and they'll pick a book and there'll be a carpet and they'll sit. And they found that children's reading increases by 22% when they read to a dog as opposed to a parent or a teacher. So, so better listeners. I love that. Yeah. They're great so, listeners. And, and, My dog is there, I read more. And again, you know, the, the value is we're going to get people that might not have been looking to the wreck who will try this and then there's another client for something else or a different program or a new volunteer. So the Woods Committee will also have a presence at Spring Fest like yep. they did at October Fest right. with you know an arts and crafts, uh, several arts and crafts uh, things to Yep, they're going to they're gonna do individual fold. pots this year where your children can plant a flower, <laughs> paint it, and then they can paint a little birdhouse also if they wanted to. So, so they're, they're from again where we were to where we are, it's just great. Remember stuff. two years ago, were you saying? I told you, I don't know if we'd sure be here. If yeah. We're still going to have an itch center, doesn't it? Well, Nikki Coddington deserves a great deal of credit because um, uh, if you don't remember, I approached Nikki um, at a time when we were really in, in a bad spot, and I asked her if she would consider for two years taking on the role as chair to help lead us through. Yeah. And she agreed to do it, and I know she she's already asked me five emails. Is it time? <laughs> and I keep asking her to wait a little longer. Um, not that she's going to leave the committee, but 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 she would hope I think to pass on the, the chair part of it. But she's been such a stabilizing force. All of you who know her know that people respect her. They listen to her. She could, you know, she could take me and Ed Marin yelling and make us end up liking each other when the meeting was over. So, but I do like it. That's, um, but but I'm very excited about it. We're, we've got some plans to increase. Yeah, this whole thing's executive session, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Speak up. I don't think they got that. Right. <laughs>
Um, we've got some plans for the inside of creating some uh, bookshelves, um, and we're going to actually have a tree going from the floor up to the ceiling with shelves built into it from a tree that will come from the woods. Peter Cop's going to do the work for us. So, so, so lots of good things up there. The trails are a mess right now. The trails have, yeah, uh, the trails have taken a hit. Uh, yeah, we, we haven't been out there. April 14th, we'll do a lot, but it's, some of this is, is, is going to be heavy duty. Um, with Brenda's help and with Larry's help, we've already, um, we have an adjuster coming out Monday to look at the damage that we've encountered in the parks. And um, because I wanted to show them something, I made Chris Capali walk the trails today and take pictures. So we're not just making it up and, and they could see, you know, what happened out there. So be excited about the woods. Uh, you all know that, I know that Chet Kerr uh, approached you guys and um, he made a presentation to the woods <laughs> committee. And when he's back, we're going to have him make a presentation to our pack. We're probably going to uh, publicize it and invite other people because I think other community members might want to hear um, what he has to say. Um, you know, on the surface, there, there's a lot of positives about his report and his study, but there's still questions, you know, that we have. And, um, you know, I've, I've already had a, a preliminary talk with Larry about some of those. And, um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're definitely going to take a position and get back to you guys on what we think. Uh, as soon as possible. I promised Chet as soon as he gets back, uh, we're going to try to get him to our April meeting, and that way before he comes to you in May, um, I can make sure that you know where the Woods Committee and our PAC stand on what he's proposing. We'll probably, you know, the night he comes in front of you, um, I would think that, I, I know I, Rick and I will be there, and hopefully Nikki, so that all three you know, you're not just getting it from me. You'll, you'll see how everybody feels about that. So, so that's that's the nature center. Um, our parks. Um, Can I ask something? Sure. Um, initially, I I always thought the parking up there would be a problem, but I guess given all the success you're talking about, enough cars can somehow get in there when you have a popular program. Big events, parking is an issue. Yeah. With the help of the police department, what we do is we allow parking on the on our side of Mountain Road um, because there's nothing Greenberg it's snowing out oh. <laughs> snowing it's really swollen oh, oh it's really we're in denial we don't see it we don't see it it's not happening so yeah. we, we park <laughs> well we have like the big events yeah. the police department will give us uh, someone up there and we'll put two staff with vests on and we make sure people park and the you know, it's amazing. The big event in the fall, which we thought we'd have the, one of the biggest crowds we'd ever had, and we did. The day we did it, there was a rollover on the sawmill, and they took all the traffic and sent them our way. And we and we got through it. But That's the way things happen. Yeah, yeah. But we got we got through it. So so yeah, parking is is an issue. We've created about six additional spots since uh, it was originally open, and uh, I don't know if you've been up there, but there's new gates that lead to the compost, which look a heck of a lot better. We put one at the reservoir lot and one there. Uh, we worked with DPW on that to make sure everybody was good with it. Um, but yeah, parking will it'll still be a problem. You, you can't have a big event without having a plan and using the police. But the, the, the program with the toddlers and parents bringing the kids Works up there is enough yep. for what we do is we, we do coordinate with DPW when we have especially something big during the day because we ask them to make sure if they're having any trucks come in oh, that they right. try to do it early in the morning and that the loaders out of there, it, it helps. Yeah. The, 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 the biggest problem is the same problem we've faced, which is dogs off leash in the woods. <clears throat> we continue to struggle with what to do, but it's still in, it's still the number one complaint that I get about the trails in the woods. But. We're still working on it. Um, as far as back to Matheson, uh, we lost um, all of our blinking lights that were along the shoreline because if you didn't know, the river was in the park again. Um, outside of Sandy, it was the worst I'd seen in all my years here. And we, we <laughs> lost, um, and they're pretty expensive, those things. So, um, and to clean up labor intense. I mean, there was so much and we're still not there. And then the second storm came 
And at Cenicutson, we had a, uh, the railroad ties. There was a lot of washout behind them, which will have to be repaired. Some of them moved nowhere near what happened at Sandy, but again, a lot of labor. And uh, you may remember years ago, we had a floating dock yes. um, that we've struggled with, but it was on the ramp and it was, it's been there for two years and it's somewhere now in Manhattan. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Or beyond. No, no, it was that was it was quite a couple of days as you guys know. So seeing the river come in the park is just amazing. When you if you go down there now and you look at the river and you just go and you look and then you right. think oh, it's impossible, yeah. You, you right. know, it, it almost seems impossible that the river could come up that high. Um, the river was across the tracks. Sandy, so yeah. Right. Oh yeah, right. yeah. Right. Please, yeah. Tunnel was we don't want to go yeah. there. So. Um, <laughs> so you know, in in general, we you know, we we keep plodding along. You know, we always have to be a season ahead. Um, the rec center. I hope you like what you see. Um, as you may have noticed, we've done a lot of removal of um, of, of the growth that were around the building. Um, I've had the new village landscape architect come and take a look. And we've asked her to make recommendations. When I get her recommendations, I will then ask the beautification committee to chime in, and we will eventually do some new plantings around the building. Um, but, but the building actually looks pretty good right now. If, uh, you know, it takes a while. Nice. And if you look at North Ecker Street, you can see we also took everything out of there except for one tree, which uh, Frank Mara picked out a long time ago, which will stay there. I will protect it with my body if I have to. Uh, so the buildings, you know, the buildings looking good. We still have some work to do, but but we're very pleased, um, and we'll we'll continue to try to finish it so that it's it's you know ready. We've got some some uh, touch up painting to do, but um, you know we're we're very satisfied with uh, how it looks right now. Senior center is holding up okay. You know it's over. It's almost 20 years old right now. That's yeah. insane. That's really so it's oh, wow. one it opens. Oh, one it opens. 17 years, you know. So yeah. okay. you know when you consider how old it is, you know, the, the biggest problem with the senior center is is the heating system, and uh, because there's two separate heating systems, one for the original part of the building and then for the addition. And trying to uh, keep those things running is, 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 again, it takes a lot of labor. And unfortunately, it takes Chris DePoli out of the parks a lot because he's really my, you know, my main guy to do that. But, um, uh, you know, we're, we're doing okay. Um, you know, I, I, usually I'm here and I've got new things I want or big things. I, I'm asking you to allow us to continue to do the things we've been doing with an understanding that we don't just sit pat. And we keep changing, and we keep moving. You know, um, our staff's hardworking. We will have a new member in our uh, department soon. And for those of you who don't know, Angela is expecting um, um, a scheduled birth in um, uh, in May. Are you already planning to hire the baby? She's already on the payroll. <laughs> yeah. um, and so she'll we'll be without her this summer. But Mike Donardo will be stepping up and taking on most of what Angela's programs were and he'll be the head person at uh, Teenscape and we'll be hiring an assistant to work with him. Um, we're actually still looking if you know somebody you think that's qualified you can you can reach out to us. Um, but uh, in the fall because Ange won't be back until September and then Mike's getting married um, one of the original budgets had another four or five thousand dollars in labor costs but I was able to secure a uh, college student to do their internship uh, in the fall, and I think I've got another one for the spring. So um, that's great. I think we give a student a great experience. We'll give them a stipend, which is what we've done in the past, but they won't be paid. And um, the young girl who'll be with us in the fall is a Dobbs Ferry native. Um, her dad's worked part-time for us. The last name is Coradina. She's a lovely girl. and. I think she'll be a great addition, and she'll take, she'll help out a lot when Mike's on his uh, five-month honeymoon. I think he has. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I know you're adaptable from 
from year to year and also within the year. So I think this allows you to do that. It does. I keep thinking one word that never is associated with you is nimble. I mean, I think you're, you've been pretty nimble in your ability to move things around. That's why I always have shorts on. <laughs> Since I'm always sitting down, I have to be able to do that. But, um, you know, I, 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 I like the fact that we're getting a lot of new young families who are, who are getting involved because, again, you know, it's not the same. Every, you know, people want different things. And when somebody fills a need that we were filling, you know, some of my staff were looking at it, you know, they said, gee, I didn't do a good job, that's fail. I said, no, the community dictates what we have to do, you know, and we find what the next thing is. You know, I mean, you know, we used to have a wrestling program that had five kids in it. Now we have to have multiple sessions and close it. And we run it multiple times in the year instead of just for a three or four week period. So, you know. Well, my takeaway is I have two. One, a lot of stuff going on at the rec center. And people from Porchester say eggs very differently than people from Irving. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else picked up on that? Yeah. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Eggs. Eggs. Eggs with an egg. I'm still learning new things about Joe. <laughs> For all these years. You can say whatever you want after the compliment about your son. So, <laughs> so, 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 so Tanya, would you have any official um, observations? My, you always play an important role. Well, thank you. Um, no, my only addition would be that it's been really um, a wonderful experience to be able to work through the grant to support the IS, obviously the IS grant, to support some of these things, um, to support the summer basketball tournament to support the winter off-season teenscape trip by paying for the transportation um you know working so closely with with cab and 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 the um there the positive impact club at both the high school and the middle school and um we've really created some um great partnerships and be, been able to financially support um, some of these things that that people want and that have been really um, supportive of kids. You I should be like, you right. should be extremely proud that you have this grant in this community and the work the work that Tanya and Allison spearhead with the rest of the volunteers is an amazing thing and and, and it's so important. I'll give you a, a, a great illustration. Regardless of where you fall out on the issue of the kids having their scheduled walkout today. Yesterday was a CAB meeting. They had a filled room. Um, administrators, principals, students, people from all different parts the of the weather, community, the even was. with the yeah, weather the way it was. And there was there was a healthy dialogue between the kids and the adults. And Dr. Harrison represented the school side well kids felt you know willing to stand up and talk that doesn't happen anywhere the CAB is an opportunity for, for the kids to bring the issues that are important and not in the school setting but in a different environment and Tanya and Allison's work with that, and Lisa our grant coordinator um, you know they, they they put a lot of time I think Tanya and Allison text me more than everyone else that is on my phone because there's never a dull moment and there's always something else to do and and, and i'm i'm grateful that both of them are, are there with that i know rick feels the same way as does the rest of the commission the, the grant and if you just so you know we'll be applying for the next five years i was going to ask you yep. about the it's We're, almost time it's coming up wow really quickly <laughs> so quickly it's amazing I know. it's amazing yeah, we're, we're in we're in year four so we're you know we're coming up on that next like, if, if you you know and I don't not that it's a budget item but feel better that now we have cameras and we're able to watch the parks much better um, you know right now the if I call the police department if I got a call from my friend BK Raga how do you pronounce it if, if the lights aren't on in the park um, BK will Tell you. reach out to me immediately he'll also thank me after I answer him <laughs> But I call the police department instead of having to send a man down the park and say, can you check and see if you see lights on in the park? You know, we have 
the nature center protected. We've now just we've gotten signs where we'll be putting them up everywhere that this area is under surveillance. And you know, okay. there have been times I've sat here and told you, you know, how much it's cost. One of the reasons we didn't ask for more money in the labor line is because I'm not going to have to send people out as much to check on some things. <clears throat> Right of the action. Sorry, I'm just communicating. <laughs> so the, sorry. The, uh, the the cameras are, and I thank Larry for making that happen. And um, yeah, it's it's it's, it's there, and uh, we're going to do the rec center. Um, we'll be uh, it's on the list, but but the most I ask that scenic and um, uh, the nature center be done ahead of time because we were having so much trouble up there, and it's so good to be able to watch that. So. Um, and then closing for me, you know, I just want to thank Brenda and Larry and their staffs. Um, Karen has been an amazing addition. Um, so when Larry doesn't want to talk to me, I have somebody else <laughs> in his office. Uh, and, uh, you know, as well, Joe, Brent, and, uh, great to work with. Yeah, it's, it's we, we, we have a we have a good we have a good thing going, and, and the you know you know you like work when. You get disappointed when the department head meeting gets canceled uh, <laughs> because we get to make fun of the chief. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Does anybody have any feelings in the library? You haven't talked about that in the theater. Do we want to say something bad about Greg Allen before you go? I love Greg Allen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love him. Hey, good Greg. Good, good Greg. Greg. We call him good Greg at the department. Oh, Jesus. Good Greg. Good Greg. Good Greg. Good <laughs> Good Greg. Well, we're the new fire chief. We better get out of here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No. Thank you I so much. Thank you. We, we, we really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for everything. Thank you. Thanks for everything. We'll see you soon. Thanks, for Thank you. Absolutely. Get that grant going. Oh, we're going to try. Grant going. Go ahead and try. Lots of good stuff to do. Appreciate your time as always. Yeah. Yeah. I made a motion to adjourn. I got a second. All in favor? Aye.